listening to uh, or checking out a segment from Morning Joe uh, on msnbc.com. You can check it out for yourself. We we'll put a link up as well. Deepak Chopra is talking about, and Mike Barnacle, one of the frequent uh, guests on the show, is going to ask him a question. So let's check it out. Expanding your spiritual awareness. Mm -hmm. How does one go about expanding spiritual awareness? Okay, think awareness? of somebody in contracted awareness. What does that mean? Which means their body language is uncomfortable, their eyes are shifty, their face is a skull, they usually have a fist and they're probably constipated. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the tight sphincters, that's yeah. contracted yeah. Yeah. awareness. Tight it comes with fear. Okay. Yeah. Expanded okay. awareness is when you feel connected to the web of existence. You know, I watch. I was watching your program yeah. right now. Uh, I hate to say this, but uh, Mr. Romney's body language, he's not comfortable with his own self. Tight right. sphincter. You see, and... Yeah, he just there. Tight sphincter, Mitt Romney. Uh, so just uh, in everyday plain good old down-home American language, an uptight asshole. So here's a poem on the subject. Anal. Regular folks have assholes and shit. Refined persons have anuses and defecate. That's cause they're superior assholes. No shit. So there we go. There's a poem about what he was saying, contracted awareness, people like Mitt Romney and so forth, not comfortable with themselves. Okay, so now let's continue on with what they got there. And that's contracted awareness. Now, uh, in my view... Right, and, and that's okay. what Mika was, Mika was saying. She couldn't quite figure out exactly what it was, but she said but she, she felt read like he was body language, you know, and the child can read that. Right, so there's contracted awareness, then he goes on to talk about expanded awareness, okay? Now, expanded awareness means when you have love and compassion. Those are key. Regardless what you are, wherever you go, love and compassion, they are key to all religions. And they talk about religion being the problem. Lack of religion is the problem. Today, Good Friday... I mean, now actually, uh, yeah, it's after midnight, so it's become a Good Friday, and it's also uh, the first day of Passover, or that begins this evening, okay? So we have those holidays. What do they mean? Spiritual awareness. So here's a poem about awareness, the expanded kind. And that's the name of the poem, Awareness. The dogs of war have been unleashed, and no calling them back. Terrorizing innocent folks, corrupting the dream of America. Bow down before the military industrial royal tyranny, depriving special needs folks of services, throwing these innocents to the Minotaur for their carnivorous imperial desires. Liars and hypocrites, modern day false scribes and Pharisees, bound and scraping to false gods in their sepulchre of outward cleanliness and inward rottenness, disguise and quest for cheap labor and obscene profits, epitomizing Scroogean mentality. Rush Limbaugh, O'Reilly, and Hannity, a false trinity if ever there was one, now defeated and on the run. Way to get rid of terrorists? Vote them out. American style. 
putting down bullet for ballot. So that's what your man is talking about. And then he goes on. So we're going to give him one more poem about uh, freedom now. Okay. And here it is. Being able to laugh at your own dumb ass. And that's one thing every human being has on the face of the earth is a dumb ass. And the whole psychological trip is trying to control our dumb asses. And there's divine comedy, divine madness. So here's the uh, unbounded awareness that Deepak was talking about. And I heard this from my old man. I'm just giving it a title that I came across from Socrates, Divine Madness. Nothing wrong with making mistakes, as long as you learn from them. But don't keep on making the same mistakes. Any old fool can do that. Go out and make new ones. So there you go. Divine madness. All right, what else have we got? Speaking of that, the Pope was in Mexico and in Cuba. In Mexico, he talked about the violence related to drugs. And he made it a personal problem. People have to be strong. In other words, what Nancy Reagan said, just say no. <laughs> I'm sorry, Pope, but that's very naive of you. And you need to come up with something a little more concrete, okay? Like policy problems that came about because of greed and the plantation system mentality and burdens being put on people too heavy for them to bear. And you say, hey, you can just put it on yourself and just go to Christ and take it off. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. It goes deeper than that, my friend. Those are Jim Crow laws. Okay? Racist plantation mentality, Jim Crow laws directed at Mexicans because they smoke marijuana and at African Americans who labor and the, the people doing the hardest work, the laborers. And if they enjoyed some heroin on a Friday or, or on a Saturday night when they got a few dollars, okay, some of them, and enjoyed some music, that was criminal. Or coke. When the drugs were purer and they were legal, they had to be made illegal because African Americans were enjoying themselves along with poor white and working people. The ones doing the crap, the shit labor, the menial tasks, dishwashing, or carrying, carrying other people's bags, being servants to the master class. So that's the pride and prejudice. But people cooperate in our own oppression and that's what we should be talking about. Now, when the Pope went to Cuba, he was saying, and let me get the bookmark, all right, a history here. Let me get the exact quote. Where have I got that now? Yeah, Pope Sparks. A trip sparks hope for change in Cuba. Now, there's something really interesting here. Uh, what's this? Here's what I am looking for. Quote from the Pope, Today it is evident that Marxist ideology in the way it was conceived no longer corresponds to reality, said on the flight to Mexico. In this way we can no longer respond and build a society. New models must be found with patience and in a constructive way. Okay, now here's what's really the answer to the question coming from Communist Party leader Laurent Barredo, 46, warned that no one should expect miracles from the Pope's visit because the Cuban government would only make changes at its own pace. All right. Nothing is going to change because of the Pope. The changes that have happened are going to continue because they are the only thing that will bring internal development to Cuba, he said adding he thought the trip would help the government, and as complaints about that, it might help the government. He even said that it would give prestige to the Cuban Revolution. All right, that's all an introduction. Here is 
where the, this guy is saying the same thing as the Pope. This is what's mind-blowing. Okay? I think, this is the Communist Party member Laurent Barrido speaking now. Quote, I think that the principles of the church are the same principles as the revolution. The same principles. You can believe that God exists, and I can believe that he doesn't. But if we are honest, work, produce, and help each other, it's the same. End the quote. So here is this Communist Party member in Cuba, Laurent Barreto, saying, we have common beliefs in social justice. When Christ, the ch teaching of the church, business needs to pay a living wage. Okay, the teaching of the church. Matthew, that Joe likes to talk about. And that's the movement now in America, becoming aware, hey, Christ talked about this long before Karl Marx ever said it. So the dividing line is the physical and the metaphysical. Some people believe we can build a just society without God. Others believe we can build it only with the help of grace from a divine being. Now, if the aims are the same, like this Cuban communist leader said, why can't Christians work with people like him? and practice being good neighbors, and that would be the constructive, patient way the Pope is talking about. And that Pope never heard that communist and never picked up on that. So, maybe we'll get the message to him, somehow. Maybe Marlon Joe can help get it to him. All right, Marlon Joe, so that's what you want to be talking about, and that's enlightened capitalism. Not the idolatrous golden calf capitalism, which the Pope condict, con condemned. He said there is an idolatrous love of money. That is landlord golden calf capitalism and the value system of that is cheap labor needs, business needs cheap labor because it has to compete in foreign markets. Nuh uh false. Business needs to pay a living wage. And for a healthy America, take the crime out of drugs because they're based on Jim Crow laws. And then we can rebuild our constitutional democratic republic dismantle our military-industrial complex, the empire built on that, and we have a shamrock of ideas for a constitutional democratic republic. Okay, now we're on our way to enlightened capitalism. Stewardship. Entrepreneurs guided by the value system of stewardship. And that's what that communist was talking about. Okay, what is held, the earth is a gift given to all of us. There are those who believe it's a divine gift and to be shared by everyone. And that's the Christian message. Second chapter, Acts of the Apostles, the very, just at the end, just about the end of the last, of, of the second chapter in Acts of the Apostles, the New Testament, Christian community is defined. The believers sold their possessions and the wealth was redistributed. You hear that, Hannity? You hear that, O'Reilly? You hear that, Limbaugh? The wealth was redistributed among those early Christians, so there was no one in need in the community. No one, no hungry children, no sick people that they didn't, you know, that they were going to be without because they didn't have money. That was done away with. That's Christianity when it's supposed to be. So there's the problem. We don't live up to that value system. We don't even understand it. And when somebody else is talking about it, we don't recognize it and reach out our hands and be neighborly. But it was happening in the spirit in Cuba. So there you go, Marlon and Joe. And Mike, Joe and Mike. I've got an old Pat and Mike story for you, but that will hold for another time. We'll see about getting this out there now. All right, so don't forget, anal, being able to laugh, Oh no, in freedom, being able to laugh at your own dumbass. So let's work on our own dumbasses and have a little humility about that. And ain't none of us batting a thousand, so let's see if we can go batting the three hundreds. All right, we'll be doing mighty good right there. And we won't be guilty of the speck and beam morality that Christ condemned. Okay, count and miss instead of hits. Point six, six, six. And that's the mentality from the sideline players. 
Game on. Bard Bart from BardBart.com with there's plenty more about all of what I'm talking about, including from Mike Barnacle to expand spiritual awareness, Mike, the Good Samaritan story, regardless of class, creed, color, sexual orientation, gender. Okay, that's being a good neighbor. All right, Mike, there you go. Happy Easter and happy Passover to all.